Microinverters. These are individual inverters attached to the back of the panel itself, converting DC power to AC on the roof instead of one central location within the house. There are some strong opinions on the effectiveness of these on both sides of the camp. So what are the potential gains? What are the downsides? And is the price justified? The most obvious upside to microinverters is their ability to combat the effects of shading. Operating as their own individual power plant means the output is completely reflective of that individual panel. Alternatively, string inverters have MPPTs, maximum power point trackers, which optimise the electrical load across the string to achieve the best possible output. But there will be some efficiency losses if there are largely mismatched voltages between the panels within the string. The panels themselves also have bypass diodes, which help with the effects of shading on an individual panel basis. These work by balancing the current away from the shaded areas to get the most output from the lit areas. With both bypass diodes and MPPTs in play in string inverters, it's hotly contested how much benefit microinverters yield. Though fundamentally, it remains the most elegant solution for that particular problem. Inverter efficiency is a key aspect when determining overall performance. Comparing Enphase's IQ8 range of microinverters to a number of string inverters show the efficiency levels to be in line with most, but lacking compared to some of the more premium end models. With conversions happening on such a small scale, it's difficult to match the raw efficiency some of the larger inverters from these brands offer. The maximum efficiency for microinverters is actually at mid-load, not maximum load like many alternatives. This is a disadvantage in sunny conditions, but beneficial in mixed weather conditions. Clipping can occur with any inverter when the output from the panels exceeds the inverter's maximum. In that case, the difference is lost. The issue with microinverters is the highest rated version has a maximum output of 380 watts, but it's commonplace these days for panels to have well into the 400s. With the diagram on the right, it represents how much power might be lost on a sunny summer's day in the UK with a south facing array using 430 watt panels. Note the IQ8HC model with a maximum output of 380 loses only 1.3% of the day's total generation. The cheaper IQ8MC version, however, loses a whopping 8.7% of that particular day's generation. Naturally, this is a worst case scenario. Cloudy days won't suffer this. And suboptimal orientations such as east, west, and north will be far less constrained by this too, as the panels will typically be short of their peak outputs. String inverters often require three or more panels to achieve the minimum startup voltage, and it's suboptimal to combine panels of different orientations within the same string. Enphase's IQ8 series microinverters have startup voltage of just 18 versus a range of 100 to 200 for most string inverters. So can this result in earlier morning generation and later evening generation? Well, maybe. It depends what you're comparing it to. Because the string inverters are con uh, connected in series, the voltage of all the panels is added up, meaning it's easier to achieve startup voltage the more panels are within the string. Optimizing the inverter size is a key part of system design. Microinverters make that easier, but a similar outcome overall is still achievable with a string inverter. Microinverters, being their own individual power plant, allows panels to be placed with great freedom. So here's an example on the left. This is uh, my roof. It's my north facing roof. It only would fit two in that particular section. Um, so two on its own wouldn't be enough uh, for a full string, uh, but microinverters um, allow these to be uh, really effective. Uh, and on the right, there is um, uh, an image from uh, another YouTuber. Um, put in the comments if you know who it is. Uh, he has, um, again, um, it's another situation where he can only fit uh, one panel in that particular section of the roof um, and uh, he's, he's done that on both sides um, but that wouldn't really be possible uh, with a string inverter unless there was um, more panels of the same orientation uh, somewhere else. On to durability and let's start with data logging. Tracking on an individual panel basis is useful for us geeky types who really like to understand the data and drill down into it, but it can also flag up when there are issues with a panel, causing it to underperform or not generate at all. 
Next, let's look at the time frame. And at 25 years, the IQ8 n-phase microinverters compare really favorably to uh, just about everything else. Most string inverters uh, typically have a standard warranty of between 5 and 10 years uh, with additional um, upgradable warranty lengths uh, for additional costs or um, further stipulations such as being coupled with a battery of the same brand and things like that. Um, most solar panels as well, it's, it's worth noting, have a warranty of 25 years or beyond. Uh, so it's actually roughly in line with that, unlike the, uh, the most of the other brands, which is uh, quite impressive. However, the big downside is, uh, with more microinverters present, because there's one per panel, um, you would think that would result in a higher chance of failure. With that in mind, a single microinverter failure is likely to represent a small proportion of the overall expected generation. All remaining panels can continue functioning as normal. On the example day in the diagram, a single microinverter failure could result in around 1.3 kilowatt hours of energy loss. A failure on a string inverter would mean the entire 13 kilowatt hours of potential energy would be lost. The single point of failure would result in a total loss of generation for that day until resolved. And here's where the tables turn once again. The process of resolving an issue with a microinverter, should a failure occur, is much more complex likely requiring additional scaffolding, which is prospectively costing £600 or more. A roofer's time is also needed to remove and refit the panel, and the, along with the electrical engineer, of course, who would be also needed to perform any string inverter replacement. So while the consequence of failure is much less, the resolution process is significantly more. On to cost, and the range topping IQA HC is around about £150. That's more expensive than many solar panels on the market these days, which seems a bit crazy. But before getting too hung up on that, consider the total cost of a typical install. The labour charges often represent the largest cost. And there are further costs relating to accessories such as cabling, roof fixings, etc, along with logistics and storage. And of course, as we just touched upon, the expensive scaffolding costs, which require a third party to erect and disassemble. Taking that into account, despite their hefty price, specifying microinverters might only represent an additional uplift in the region of around 10%, depending on the installer and the system size. So to conclude, I believe system design is an underrated aspect of solar PV installations. Any good engineer will tell you, use the right tool for the job. In this case, microinverters, they will always be highly effective in shaded conditions, non-optimal orientations and setups which involve panels placed in a large variety of directions and heights. You simply can't beat the flexibility they bring to the table. However, they can also be expensive and perhaps less effective compared to string inverters if used in the wrong setup. Which brings us back to my original point about system design. They can carry a different set of risks from a durability standpoint. Which is better is very much down to personal preference. Finally, I wanted to give a quick overview on my own setup, where I have used microinverters and where I haven't and why. Let's start off with the south array in green. I have a solar edge optimized string inverter. There is no significant shading and the efficiency is fantastic. I wouldn't have dreamed of using microinverters here because the clipping would have been an obvious issue, resulting in lost performance. For the east in orange and the west in purple, these aspects have major shading issues in winter. Using an optimized string inverter with an east string and a separate west string would have been a viable option, which I did seriously consider. But ultimately, I opted for the microinverter solution because of its compatibility with the panels I chose. Those panels just happen to maximize the roof space uh, perfectly. The emphasis on lower light performance was also a key factor given the orientation. The north facing aspect in grey we covered briefly earlier. There simply wouldn't have been a good way of achieving this without compromising other aspects. So microinverters were the obvious choice here. What are your thoughts on microinverters and did I miss anything out? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you found this video enlightening, if so please give it a like so it can be recommended to more like-minded people. Consider subscribing if you wish to see more content like this in the future. I also have a variety of referral codes in the description, for example if you're considering a solar install from Heatable, who offer a wide range of inverter options which include microinverters, you can get the £250 discount. That's all for today, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.